Thank you. All right, let's get started. So this Valentine's Day, it really gives us an opportunity to think about the relationships that we have in our lives. But an unfortunate, kind of sad statistic is that a recent study showed that 43% of people feel they lack meaningful relationships. That's kind of sad. Why do we need relationships? Well, they give us people to celebrate with, to have fun with, to do work with. I mean, who wouldn't want to do firewood with my two-year-old son? <laughs> they also give us people to be there when we really need them, when we need love, support, help. That's when re relationships really come into play. So why do we have this bad statistic out there? Maybe it's because we're not really talking or connecting with those people around us. <laughs> yes, that sign is for real. It's from a uh, restaurant in San Francisco. The good news is the restaurant is out of business now. <laughs> but this kind of isolation was really brought home to me last winter. So the snow and cold made it a little bit more difficult for my family to get out of the house. <laughs> and by the end of the winter, OK, this is serious, we were kind of felt isolated. We kind of felt a little bit lonely. And a lot of neighborhoods out there, they're kind of designed in a way that kind of promote this isolation, where the way that we keep and grow our relationships is by finding times to go have coffee and play dates and do things with those that we know. What if we lived in a neighborhood where we didn't have to do quite so much effort, where you often saw people together talking, laughing, playing together? That kind of neighborhood is what we're hoping to create. That kind of neighborhood is, is one way of doing that is through co-housing. And we're working together to create that here in, in Bozeman. The way that this, this neighborhood works is that the center of it is this common house. And a common house is an area where people can come together and have dinner together multiple times a week. Where you come home from work, and if you're not the cook that night, you don't have to cook. You can just go and have dinner with your friends. The neighborhood's designed with cars on the edges. So all of the pathways that connect the common house and the, the homes are these pedestrian pathways. These really welcoming environments where, where adults can go out and talk to each other, where kids can go out and play, and not have to worry about cars everywhere. The neighborhood's designed with homes kind of clustered together. That makes them close together so you bump into your neighbors but it also allows us to preserve a lot of the open space on the site. So kids can go outside and have room to be kids, where adults can go socialize together and have bonfires. All this community, it might be overwhelming at times, so it's all balanced by your own private home. The private home has all the things you'd expect, kitchens, dining rooms, bedrooms, bathrooms, living rooms. The only difference between maybe a home that you live in now is these spaces might be a little bit smaller because you can also access all of the shared resources. Those smaller homes allow us to live a little bit more sustainable, a little bit more sustainable, as well as by knowing your neighbors, you can really share a lot of things with them. Why should every household own their own lawnmower? Why should every household own their own tools? And why don't we have a community garden where everyone works together to grow our vegetables? Have you ever heard this, the saying that it takes a village to raise a child? Well, in co-housing, you have that multi-generational community that's there to support the children. There's other kids for them to play with, but also there's lots of adults that bring lots of skills, knowledge, and they're there and they know your kids and they can help them grow. At the other end of life, when we're thinking about how our lives are gonna change as we grow old, the tight-knit community that co-housing provides can do things like provide rides to appointments, make sure that you get healthy food, and also just bring a lot of joy and energy to, the, to your lives so you can stay in your home longer. These communities are designed by the people that are gonna live in them. So when a community says, hey, we love to dance, or we love to have music, or in this community, we have a lot of bikes. <laughs> they can work with the architect to design spaces that really work for the, the interests and the needs of that community. Now, I've been using this word co-housing quite a bit. Now, I want, when, you think of, when you hear co-housing, you might think of a large group of people all living together in a home together, or maybe a commune where everything, including income, is shared. 
And while this might work with, for a lot of people, this is not what co-housing is. Co-housing is a private home balanced with some shared resources. It's not a new idea. It started in Denmark in the 1960s. It moved to the US in 1992, where the first community was built. Today, there's more than 170 existing communities and 140 forming. The community that we're creating right now in Bozeman will be the first co-housing community in Montana. But in some ways, it's not a new idea at all. It shares a lot of the characteristics of an old-time village, where there's a smaller group of people that know and care about each other, and a design that brings those people together, whether it's a general store or, or a town plaza, where people go together, come together and just talk. Here in Bozeman, we're really moving forward. We have a group of about a dozen households that's working to create a neighborhood. We're also learning about each other and having fun. So this is a picture of a Friendsgiving event that we had in my house where we had 26 people, which was kind of overwhelming, but also really fun. We have a site for the project, so it's on the south end of town. It's about five acres. It has a wonderful view, has nice natural areas. It's pretty close to things. Um, but we're also not doing this all ourselves. So we're working with professionals. There's a, a consultant that has 30 plus years of experience. We have an architect that has lots of years experience. So we're making this happen, and we're creating a community so that as we go through this cold, long Montana winters that can, by the end, be a little bit isolating, we have a community there to support us. So I hope and I wish that many of you live in great neighborhoods, but if you want to come join us, we'd welcome you to come join us.